Two people and a company have been sanctioned over Chinese cyber attacks on the UK. In a speech yesterday, Deputy PM Oliver Dowden said that Beijing was behind the attacks on the voter register and on a number of MPs. Our correspondent politically, Alicia Fitzgerald, is back with us. I got her name wrong. Along with broadcaster Matthew Stadlin and security expert Will Get. It's got there's millions of. How many you. of us do you need? Jeremy? Well, lots to get us through <laughs> to get us through today. Um, ladies, gentlemen, actually, let's start, Alicia, if we can. Let's just because there's been much response to this. Mm -hmm. This was apparently a hack that took place in 2021, so that's three years ago, that affected 40 million of us uh, electoral register votes, and it's taken the government three years and they've sanctioned two people in a company and if i can just put it into context because i would never agree with the snp but stuart mcdonald said and i quote it's a bit like t turning up at a gunfight with a wooden spoon i mean you've summed it up brilliantly there we go i mean yes this was an attack that happened a good few years ago now and that the government have now just identified as being from china they've said that it was a chinese company and they've sanctioned two individuals from that company for for hacking in to this data and retrieving data. And it wasn't just data from the Electoral Commission. There were also certain MPs who have been vocal critics of China whose information has been uh, attacked and gathered there as well. So obviously we had this response from the Deputy Prime Minister, Oliver Dowden, but it didn't really go down too well. Lots of MPs coming forward and just saying it simply wasn't enough. It didn't go far enough. And realistically, will these sanctions actually do anything? Probably not. Uh, will, what could the government have actually done? They say that this is not enough, but how far could they have gone with these, with these sanctions? I think they could have gone much, much further. I mean, what we've got to understand here is we've got a, a very, very complex landscape of attacks. I mean, this is coming on a variety of different levels. I was really surprised that Russia didn't get a name check, nor did Iran, and nor did a number of other state actors who are constantly trying to attack this country. I mean, if we look at and quantify the size of issues, in 2023, worldwide, there were about eight and a half billion cyber attacks across the world. Now, just to cover this small area yesterday, I really felt didn't give justice to the intelligence agencies, particularly GCHQ, who are working incredibly hard behind the scenes to try and prevent these types of attacks. So, you know, I, I think on a very basic level, it was a pretty <coughs> disappointing speech. Well, the, the world has changed. I mean, you talk about, um, you know, our infrastructure. You talk about cyber attacks. The world has changed. Cold War information, I was talking, you were talking yeah. about, you say, harvesting data. There's a lot of people watching this who will go, well, hold on a minute. I mean, you know, they're just blaming China or they're trying to... But, but it is a genuine, genuine fit. If, if 40 million of your voters' details, whether some of that's online or not, can be harvested... We have to wise up. I mean, I thought flimsy was an understatement. I thought, he, I think he's dowdy anyway. That his speech was just not, I, I don't know. It didn't really fill me with the belief. In fact, I rather cynically thought you just mentioned it because we're in election year. Do something about it, security-wise, right? I, I, absolutely. And I think there was zero take-home for members yeah. of the general public who were listening into this. And I think what people have to understand are and are beginning to understand a great deal more these days is that the intelligence gathering by foreign state actors is gathering pieces of a jigsaw puzzle about each of us, whether it be who we voted for, what social media we use, uh, what our buying habits are. It's creating what we call a pattern of life of each of us individuals. Now, China has the capability, they have the algorithms, the sophistication and the technology and the manpower behind it to put together and construct these jigsaw puzzles of basically the demographics across the United Kingdom. Now, this is where it becomes really dangerous, because although they were talking about members of uh, Parliament being banned from using TikTok, does that mean everybody in their household, their children? So it's, again, influencing sentiments. It's influencing over and beyond trying to skew numbers, for example, of those that are voting. It's looking at influencing the sentiment of those voting, whether that be through deep fake, through AI, through misinformation, disinformation, so many different what ways. What about TikTok? We were talking about that yesterday, we were, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, Matthew, like, on one hand, you know, these sanctions are being brought on China or these two individuals and a Chinese company. Then on the other, there's millions of people across the country who've downloaded... TikTok, for example, that is already harvesting... Our, our, our data is being harvested on a daily basis. Well, you think of Henkley Point, you think of the way in which we are sort of inextricably almost 
bound up with China. We're massive consumers of their goods. So it just shows what a complicated world we live in. I thought Ian Duncan Smith, who's one of those people who's actually been sanctioned by China, former Conservative Party leader, of course, and still a Tory MP, he put it best. He said that the government's response was like an elephant giving birth to a mouse. Yeah, we spent most of this morning trying to work out what the heck that means, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Um, I, 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 I just, just back to Will quickly, guys. Yeah. We'll talk about... I mean, TikTok... Yeah. Algorithms, yeah. information. I bring it back to everyday people who will be thinking, oh, come on, what would you say? What would, would your advice be to people? Because we've been sat here for months saying we need to understand that this China-Russia-Iran axis has major impacts and is going to... If we sit here and go, oh, no, come on, let's have it, we're going to be... I don't know. Where well, are we going to end up? I think, that, I think, firstly, we can't believe what we necessarily read or see on social media. I think we also have to bear in mind that any particular product that comes out of China that we utilise on a daily basis is going to be feeding that audience with a, a message that the Chinese state is necessarily going to want to push. So you look at, for example, things like TikTok. The product, or if you like, the content which is actually shown on the app in China is about furthering oneself, about being industrious, about education. Whereas we're seeing over here, it's jumping on milk crates, it's uh, <coughs> eating Tide Pods, whatever it might be. It's a dumbing down to a particular audience. And there, again, it's pervasive in the message. And I'm not saying necessarily TikTok, I'm, I'm saying any social media that potentially comes over here. I would just say this different but important that Elon Musk is the guy who now runs and owns Twitter, and he's got a very serious agenda of his own. Some of the content he pushes out, I think, is really quite chilling. On the response of the UK government, by the way, I mean, they've nicked 40, 000, 40 million of our addresses, and what have we done? We've slapped sanctions on a couple of individuals and Completely some agree. minor looking organisations. No, no, I, I can Do we need. I mean, so many times, really, everybody we talk about on this show, uh, start with you, Will, we talk about social media companies, the big tech companies being brought to task more, 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 more regularly and, and yeah. in a far straighter... Take more responsibility. Is, is yeah. that something the government should look at? We as a society... Is Absolutely. social media... Is it time for social media to be, I don't know, regulated I, more? I, I, you know, I, I, you may or may not know, I wrote a book about, you know, how parents are able to sort of help their children or control their children. And the one thing you've got to bear in mind is that any age up to about 13, there is best practice that as a parent you've got to also instill into children. But beyond 13, they will surpass their parents' capability and te technological know-how. And, and My son's five and he's passed me already. <laughs> well, exactly. And I think, I think you've got to also bear in mind as a parent that as much as the government may try and impose certain controls, again, we don't want too many controls put in place because once they're in place, they're very difficult to remove, that as a parent, you know, until that child's paying for the use of that phone and the, and the phone itself, yeah. it's on loan to the child. Alessia, with the, the politicians that you speak to, the conversations that you have, do you think there's a growing concern about the external influence uh, of, of so-called bad actors on the general election coming up? Definitely. I mean, this has been murmuring for quite some time now. We've got two issues. We've got China specifically, which has been cropping up probably a bit more recently than it has um, over the past kind of decade or so. Our relationship with China has deteriorated and re China's relationship with Russia has grown and improved. So that has definitely been very present in the UK government. But they've always just been a bit too afraid to actually label them as a threat, which they actually have done now, which is... Which is... Why? Why now? It, you know, I know this, where she's going attack, with this. Well, no, this attack happened three... No, I mean, I'm Three years ago. Why has it taken three years? Why has it taken three years? We found out about it end of last year, sort of, publicly. So why is it the front-page news yesterday? Why have they really pushed it out yesterday? I think this was Dave. probably just a straw-breaking camel's back time. kind of situation. There's been a few situations that have arisen over, over recent years, and the government have been a bit cautious by labelling them a threat because... We rely on China for so much. But maybe we need to rely less on China. But that's it. That... But the issue is that we just don't have an alternative right. at the moment. So for so long, they've been too afraid to kind of say, you know, if we labour them as a threat, what does that mean? Are we going to put ourselves in a worse situation than, than we're just currently in? Quickly spell this out as simply as I can. In the old days, you see these things in front of you, newspapers, yes, right? That's newspapers, how most that. people in this country got their news, along with the radio, where you'd have trained editors, right? And some, of course, newspapers, maybe all of them, have some sort of agenda, but they are British newspapers. Now, you could argue that we are consuming a lot of our news via, say, TikTok, where ultimately the editor-in-chief is the Communist Party leader in China.
I, I think also one, I mean, just to add in there as well, I mean, and I take your point and I agree with you entirely, there is no filter of control. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest problems I think I've seen, particularly with X, formerly known as Twitter, is that it's in fact regulated far less than I think it was before. Mm -hmm. um, even sort of the fact checking, the fact checking is even done by other users. It's not actually done by any admin. There's no controls. So the one thing that we've got to so be the so cautious of speech on steroids, you but got that it. comes with problems, right? Absolutely. And I, and I think really it comes down to the fact that we have to be very careful. I've been seeing some recent deep fakes, some of the technology that's being used, which is frighteningly realistic. It's getting better and better, not by the year, but by the week. That Russian bot response, for example, to the IS attack in yeah. Moscow, yeah. trying to blame Ukraine, that sort of thing, mm. is very difficult to know and what even, to trust. And even look at the response to, you know, um, Kate Middleton's Princess of Wales uh, video on Friday, immediately there was a cohort of people saying, well, that's AI, and as much as we can dismiss those people, and obviously it should be dismissed, you can understand why there will be a certain section of people who might, believe, you know, struggle to believe certain video content. I mean, it's like Russia coming out last week and saying that uh, King Charles had died, you know, yes. and, and feeding that intel in. You know, again, one of the things that the Chinese intelligence agencies, as well as Russian and Iran, will feed off is conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. And any conspiracy theory that is created, however ludicrous it might be, they will give it traction. They will yeah. push it and automate it. I what mean, are I we saying very quickly, because we are almost saying, what, what are we saying to people? How, how are we, what are we supposed to believe? Well, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to check these things briefly? Uh, OK, so I think that the easiest way of doing it is like traditional intelligence gathering, which is go to various different divorced or, or separated sources to right. confirm or corroborate a particular story that you're seeing. Don't go to one singular source of information. OK, fantastic. Well, thank you both. God, All we three could have spoken you. for ages. Both, yeah, thank you, It's an you important everybody. conversation, really. It really it is, is important. Really, really important. We can talk you. about it all day. And well done, Alicia, a lot more in the last hour. When you said, <laughs> I'm going to think of more to say. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia Fitzgerald, broadcaster, Matthew Sutherland, and security expert, Will Geddes. Well